I started Natural Habitats in the very early 80s. At the time, there was only one landscape architect in Auckland, a great guy called Andrew Geddes, who I started working with. And Andrew really showed me the potential of landscaping at uh, the highest level. Natural Habitats employs well over 100 people. We've, we've got bases across New Zealand. We work in the Pacific. We're what we call an integrated company, so we uh, design, build, right through to maintenance and care. In the 90s, we started to notice that green roofs were being promoted as a, uh, one of the um, options to helping to mitigate the effects of uh, more and more intensive urbanisation. And green roofs were the very first way that I saw that we could help to slow the damage that we were doing to the environment. From there I was lucky enough to meet Mark Paul in Australia and Mark had done a huge amount of research in, in Amalta how to take uh, gardens and from a horizontal plane and put them vertical and that's where living walls came from really really following in the footsteps of Patrick Blanc from France. The first project was the Key West Roof Garden back in 1995. It's, it's an apartment complex and a hotel. Um, it was on the sixth floor and it had a convention centre there as well. We had to come up with something that was inspirational and, and you know, a first if you like. The, the technical aspects of roof gardens hadn't really been established back then, so we had a lot of research to do. But funnily enough, the, the, the recipe we came up with is pretty much the same as we're using today with a few minor modifications. Um, so we, we obviously got it right. It was based on um, the Auckland Harbour, uh, the islands in the harbour. And so we had um, a lightweight material, such as uh, types of gravels, which uh, sort of evoke the, the waves on the shore. Um, the islands were created by um, mounds of uh, lightweight soil material uh, with grasses, uh, poor nights lilies and pudakawas. I head up a dedicated team within Natural Habitats which is focused on the design, development, installation and care of green walls and roofs. What I love about green walls and green roofs is the possibilities of bringing in plants into areas that otherwise haven't been considered part of landscaping and really being able to put a lot of biodiversity in a small area and in the urban areas. People just look up and beam in amazement really. We did one in Wellington recently where it was a public wall in Civic Square in the main square in Wellington. It was really awesome to see the public, the people who had paid for the wall, be so appreciative and, and see what can be done with this technology and, and bring it into an area that was beforehand basically just concrete. The green wall in Civic Square in Wellington was 23 square metres, which is a medium sized wall for what we do. It used all native plants, a range of coastal and epiphytic plants that would tolerate the windy city and also the cool climate down there. The way our system works, our green walls are very easy to install, it takes very little time. There is lead time of planting them and growing them on, but the actual installation process is very smooth and easy. If the wall is designed right, with the right plant choice for the environment, then these walls will flourish. The Civic Square wall was put up within two days and went from a bare wall to this awesome jungle in that time. As far as value for money is concerned, it depends on who you're measuring. The City of Portland and Oregon have done a lot of work on this. They say developers, zero to five years or zero to whenever they sell the project, they should be more than recovering their cost. And the work that we've done here, we've proved that. Uh, Mervac, when they first did Key West here, 
added four million in revenue. In other words, they got another four levels of building for spending a little over 100,000 on a fantastic green roof. The park in the viaduct, exactly the same thing. It raised the average sale price of the apartments around this private, very large green roof private park by something like 25%. We find that tenants and developers uh, react very positively to green walls especially, they're very trendy, they are the, uh, they're very beautiful to look at. Uh, smart developers have been faster to catch on than others. Uh, I think of Central Park One in Sydney which has set the new benchmark in Australasia for the coverage of green walls, of green screens, green roofs. Um, they went out there, built a very expensive and beautiful project and sold it all out. Branding is a huge one. I think of the wonderful walls that we've done for Britomart, Google, Microsoft, Goodman's, Stephen Ma in a department store, leaders in their field. And why are they doing it? Because they want to be associated with uh, something new, something green, something again that sets them slightly apart that they are thinking. People are wanting to do things smarter. Often that means more cost effectively. I think of not only green roofs and green walls which are solving issues right at the source. I think of rain gardens and that sort of thing which lower the cost to the community by dealing with issues of stormwater, wastewater, pollution early on and rather than it all flowing through to a very expensive plant and then trying to deal with the problem there and just flushing it out to sea.